By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Hank once again. We've seen him more often on the channel lately. And he is playing with an Arabian Nights aggro deck. So that basically means I believe he's playing with blue, with green, he's playing with red, and he's playing with Surrender Perfrites. Uh, he's playing with uh, Urnum Gins, he's playing with Curdape, so he wants to just play very aggressively, very quickly. And I'm playing with my uh, white and red Tron build. So I'm playing with a lot of artifact power, and I want to get Tron, I want to make a huge fireball, or simply cast a big artifact creatures and artifact spells because of the Tron mana. And obviously I use my white removal to kind of control the game. So my Sword of Plows here is my Disenchant and Balance. Don't underestimate Balance. Uh, now let's get started here with the first game. I believe it's Hank on the plate on the left side. And it's going to be interesting here to, to see because I am playing City in a Bottle Main. But of course Hank doesn't know this. So this could be very, very, very entertaining. Okay, game one, we're on our way. And uh, that's a really nice start here um, from the aggro player with a Volcanic Island and a Mox Sapphire here. What can I do? Okay, okay, <laughs> playing an Urza's Mine and that's it. The Urza's Mine, it looks like a tower. Look at that, Surrender of Freak turn two. And there you go, City in a Bottle, exactly what I talked about just just two seconds ago. I mean, City in a Bottle is extremely powerful, and the thing is, a lot of people play City in a Bottle in their sideboards, and we already saw, looking at the deck lists um, from the Winter Derby, ooh, that's already pff, half a year ago, but looking at that list in the top 16, we saw so many City in a Bottles made because Arabian Night creatures are just so powerful and also City in the Bottle protects you from Library of Alexandria and from um, and from City of Brass. So I'm just playing it main here. I'm playing two copies main. But let's see what's going to happen next. Uh, playing a Soul Ring into a Winter Orb. So that means that my opponent will have less mana here. Ooh, and this could be problematic here. I need to get rid of this creature because it can destroy one of my artifacts as soon. Okay, and that's great. I'm actually top decking this Swords to Plowsiers. So, and that's kind of a savior here because I don't want him to destroy my city in a bottle. And I don't want him to destroy my Winter Orb. So it's really great. Ooh, another problem here. Yes, I have an answer again. I'm playing that Disenchant. And it looks like my opponent is kind of like stuck right now because I'm controlling the complete uh, board and look at this I have an empty hand and I'm playing um, Wheel of Fortune here and, and Hank is losing six damage there in his hand but hey he's getting seven new ones and maybe he can find an answer to that city in a bottle playing a tower that means I have Tron now when you have tower power plant and mine you have Tron and that means that your tower gives your three mana, your power plant two, and your mine two. So I just have, just to summarize this story, I have a lot of mana right now. So that's great for me here. I'm tapping down his Mox Sapphire. I just want him, just want to completely lock him up that he's not able to do anything. I'm actually changing my mind here, using my Relic Barrier to tap his Sapphire and using my Mox to tap his land. So I'm, I'm just going for the control game here. And remember, I have Tron, so I, all I have to do is untap one Tron land, and I already have three mana, so we're untapping the tower. And look at that. He's playing another Scavenger Folk, and Scavenger Folk can destroy my artifacts here. So, oh, oh okay, and so we're going to see a flip. So I'm going to put this on slow-mo, and it's, it's going to be on the Scavenger Folk. And let's see, there is the flip. Bam! And that's on target. Bye-bye, Scavenger Folk. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Hank. This is just being very unlucky here. I'm just removing everything. And um, this really demonstrates the weakness of a creature like the Scavenger Folk. Uh, getting three damage here from the Lightning Bolt. I mean, it's that summoning sickness that's it's kind of a deal breaker here. 
and it's probably why a lot of people prefer Crumble over Scavenger Folk. Although obviously Scavenger Folk is a creature and has the ability to deal damage, you know, it has the, the advantages. But this is really a nice demonstration why it's not ideal. And again, I'm tapping Hank's uh, lands, land and mox down here, trying to deny that mana. So I'm just going to continue working on that plan until I've till I have found something that's actually useful. And in the meantime, um, Hank is just playing bolt upon bolt and I'm already on 12 life here, which is quite a good accomplishment considering that he hasn't really been able to do anything. And I'm not really finding anything useful. I'm looking for my creatures here. I'm playing with a play set of Suchi and a play set of Triskelion. So the creatures are in there, but I haven't found them yet. And in the meanwhile, I'm just trying to control the game and I'm trying to protect my city in a bottle the best I can because I know that's key in this uh, matchup. And you know when you see the when you see the volcanic islands coming and you see your opponent playing a surrender free and then he splashes green, you kind of have this idea, okay, this could be an Arabian aggro deck and my city in the bottle can be very decisive here in this matchup. So I'm untapping here. And it looks like I'm not really finding anything. Look at it. Look at the amount of lands that I have. I, I think if I just draw a fireball here, it's, it's going to be a, a done deal. And this is interesting now uh, because I'm playing a Howling Mine. So I have to make a choice now. Am I going to? Yeah, I'm going to tap the Howling Mine. But that means that I cannot tap uh, that Mock Sapphire. So there are three lands now for Hank. And maybe, he, yeah, he finds land number four. So maybe he has a solution. And there it is. Wow. And there is a disc, but also a disenchant. And I think the, the, the story of this first game is really me having all the answers because um, Hank has some solutions to the problems. But every time he's playing something, I play Swords of Plowsiers. I play disenchant. I play Chaos Orb. Oh, and look at this. This card is Presence of the Master. I'm playing one May now. And it's one white and three. And when you have Presence of the Master in the game, all the other enchantments are countered. So you cannot play any other enchantments anymore. Now, this is basically to protect me from copy artifacts, but also to protect me from a moat or to protect me from a circle of protections, um, to protect me, obviously, from energy flux after sideboarding, because uh, that's uh, that can be a problem for me. Uh, playing with... with all the amounts of artifacts that I play with. Um, but still, I mean, Hank is still in 21, even though I've been controlling the game for a long time. But uh, finally, I'm able to summon a creature. There's a Sushi 4-4 creature. And obviously, I'm just trying to tap his land down. And he only has that one Mock Sapphire. So let's see what he can do. Obviously, he's kind of trying to find a way out. I, I wonder what he is looking for. And he's discarding a Surrender Pafrit. So that's a great sign for me. But I, he's in such a lock. I kind of feel, I kind of feel for him here. Because um, like I said, he had some answers. But I managed just to take care of all of them. And attacking now with the Suchi, dealing 4 damage finally. So he's going down to 17. And I've also found that second a Relic Barrier. So that means I can now also tap down that Mox Sapphire again. And he's discarding another card again, passing turn. And I'm attacking. It's going to 13. And there's, there's the Fireball, playing two Fireballs, found one, playing a huge one. He has no mana to counter or do anything. Look at that, look at what he had in his hand. He had a regrowth, so he was looking for that um, green mana to at least do something, get his Chaos Sword back, maybe uh, try to flip that on the city in a bottle and get control back of the game. Uh, it wasn't working, so that was the first game. So we're going to go to our sideboards. And um, we'll see you right back after sideboarding. Game number two. And let's see what's going to happen here. 
drawing cards and uh, it's the Arabian Nights aggro player Hank who gets to start again oh library of Alexandria okay so hopefully I can find that city in a bottle again that would be helpful actually this is after sideboarding and I boarded the city in the bottles out and I'm already regretting doing that oh man earn him this might this might be interesting maybe you have some advice for me um, when I play with city in the bottles like I said I play with two main I'm really happy with that but what has happened to me in a few tournaments is that after I've played them in game one in game two people board out their Arabian Nights creatures for other creatures and I'm kind of you know I wouldn't say stuck with the bottles but they're they're hardly effective anymore and I'd rather play with for instance land removal or in this case I'm playing with red elemental blasts um, do you have some advice for me what would you do would you always keep the city in the bottle in or would you uh, take them out um, well let's quickly go back to the game uh, by the way because it's not over yet I've played a chaos orb and I've played a winter orb so that winter orb can actually get kind of annoying and I'm gonna flip here again so there was that flip in game one and in game two I'm gonna flip again I need to really hit this earn of gin or I'm definitely toast BAM and another good flip I'm on a roll here and this surrender of Freed is going to the yard so at least that's kind of keeping me alive here and that winter orb the reason I'm playing it this early already is I want it to be annoying for my opponent with the library of Alexandria so every time he has to the only land he's gonna untap probably is that library um, and you know that means that I'm not getting any damage from the factory and also that he has a mana less and I'm kind of hoping for maybe an early Tron um, to trying to get back into this game so there's a Kurt Ape 2-3 because of the Taiga that's a classic combination it's something that you saw I remember that play from the revised era when I started playing people that that Taiga Kurt Ape that was like some high-tech stuff and uh, it's a very strong creature I mean a 2-3 for one mana I mean that's just amazing and look at that and that's the problem with winter orb in the 93 94 uh, format is that you have moxen and people have a lot of moxen and oh yeah of course you also have <laughs> black lotus there playing a uh, regrowth on the black lotus and all that artifact mana is not um, doesn't really care about winter orb or no winter orb and look at this go oh my goodness and here you can see is really smashing me down I believe I've boarded in a wrath of God so hopefully I can find that one any second planes I figured hey I'm playing against a creature heavy deck I might as well and I'm asking how many cards he has in hand obviously because of that strip mine and this is interesting I actually have a balance in hand believed or not but I'm deciding to play presence of the master and the reason I did this is because I'm on 12 and I figured I'm just gonna take one more hit and then I can play out a little bit more and I can kind of get his hand size down and yada 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 and he's attacking us so am I just taking six look at that there's a berserk and there's a double bolt oh and here you go I'm showing you my hand now oh, oh this is a bad play I also had a swords and uh, such uh, oh. the thing is I mean I want to elaborate on this because you're probably thinking he's the worst magic player ever maybe you're right but the thing is I was thinking I want to get presence of the master out to make sure I do not get an energy flux in my face I'll take the six damage after that I'll be I'll still be on six or, or seven whatever and I'll do damage control I play my my balance and whatnot obviously this was a very bad decision but hey on the positive note there's always a silver lining we are going to get a third game so I'm going back to my sideboard probably putting my city in the bottles back in and let's see what's gonna happen in game number three game number three and it's one one and I am on the play starting with the plateau Passing turn here, Mishra's Factory on the left, second plateau. Let's see, passing turn again. Playing in Earth's Mine. There's another dual land. And look at that. There we've got that energy flux that I'm so afraid of. 
and there is a disenchant playing with the play set of disenchant and initially initially when i started playing tron i wasn't playing with the color white and my brother kept telling me start playing white and i'm not to be honest i'm not a big fan of white well wasn't a big fan of white but i mean disenchant is such a powerful spell and here you go another disenchant over the factory and that kind of convinced me to go white and now that i've decided to play it in this tron build i will never Get a, well, never say never, but there's there's not a big chance that I'll leave the color white because it's it's so powerful. Uh, the having access to balance to disenchants and to swords is just so powerful. Um, let's have another look, and I'm playing another land here. And when I'm looking at my opponent, I only see two dual lands there on the table, so it looks like he's having some land issues here. He does have the curative that he can attack with, so I'm going down to 18, and he's passing turn, not playing a land. So that's great news for me. And tapping six, look at that. Heart casting a Triskelion. Boom, boom, boom. I'm playing with four. Obviously, the idea here is that. Ooh, and there's a lightning bolt on me. Always that direct damage that also killed me in that last game. So I'm already down on 14. Now, the idea obviously is not to hard cast a Triskelion, but to use Tron to kind of get it out early. But hey, this also works. Oh, look at this and he's playing uh, his berserks and we're actually having a discussion here because at first i'm thinking okay i'm just going down but then i'm remembering that game and i'm remembering that game where i went down to six and he killed me with a double bolt so i don't want to do that now and i have the triskelion so what i'm going to do and we're discussing it right now i'm saying okay you're going to put a berserk on and that's fine. And you're going to put a second Berserk on. And here I want to kind of put my foot on the on the brake and kind of stop the action and use my Triskelion here and deal three damage to your Curdape to make sure that your Curdape is dead before it can deal damage to me. Because obviously lesson learned from the previous game. I don't want to go down to six again. I'm not sure if he plays with Chain Lightnings. I don't think so, but even if he doesn't, then he still has three more Lightning Bolts. Maybe he's playing with Psy Blast as well. I mean, who knows? I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to go down to six life because I'm on 14. And with the double Berserk, I would get eight damage in total. So I would go down to six. So we're having this talk about it. And obviously Berserk is a very powerful card, but the downside of Berserk is always that um, that there's always a window for your opponent to kind of respond to the Berserk. And there is a quick Lightning Bolt. And I'm going down to 11. And he's playing out a Volcanic Island and passing turn untapping here having my triskelion available here attacking just dealing one damage because it lost all its counters so it's kind of a robot without arms and look at this look at what i'm doing and i don't really mind i've done this before i'm playing a city in a bottle and that means i'm losing my own uh, city of brass but I'd rather do that than giving him the option to play any Arabian Night spells. And you're probably wondering why isn't he waiting um, for Hank just to play out an Arabian Night card and then play out City in a Bottle, um, at least getting a two for one. And the reason I'm not doing that is because I know that my opponent is playing with Time Twister and my opponent is playing with um, Wheel of Fortune. And for me, the City in the Bottle is just too valuable. I don't want to lose that card or, or shuffle it back into my library. So when I have it in my hand, I'm just going to play it out. And hopefully it's going to already do its damage because he's going to have card in his hands that he can do nothing with. Now, let's have another look at the game. I'm playing a Winter Orb here and I have that lock, that Parfait lock with uh, the Icy Manipulator. And I can no longer attack with my Triskelion here. And he's attacking with his Suchi. And in response, I'm playing... A sword supplies here, so that does mean that he's getting full life again. So look at his life total now, it's on 21. So that's a pretty good life total. And I only have that little 1-1 one, one Triskelion to attack with. So now he's going back to 20. It's a little bit pathetic. 
It would be nice now to have an extra creature. And let's see. Uh, choosing to tap down a land now. Playing with the Triskel attacking with the Triskelion again and playing a Suchi. So it looks like I'm kind of getting the the upper hand now. And considering his full hand, I guess there is quite a lot of Arabian Nights in his hand there. Attacking for five, so he's going to 14. Playing another Relic Barrier, and that's great because that means I can tap his Mox there and a land. So he only has one land left. And now I'm really kind of locking him in here. Attacking again, dealing five more damage. He's going down to nine. Tapping his Mox again, his Mox Ruby there. And look at that, there's a Soul Ring. So, I mean, he's getting some, he's getting, he's getting some more mana now. So I have to be vigilant. Attacking here, dealing five damage, going to four. Tapping here, and there's a Fireball, and that's game. That's game, oh, look at that, oh. Oh my goodness, oh, that's game, that's good. That's very happy with this victory. Very strong deck, this Arabian aggro deck, but uh, lucky with that city in a bottle. And as you can see, he's pointing out his um, Nevenerl's disc, Larry Nevin's disc, saying, you know, if, if I would have had the opportunity, I almost had enough mana to play it out, but you kept tapping me down. Um, well, that's it for now. That's uh, it's a sweet victory for me. Finally, after losing a couple of games against uh, against this player, he's got a lot of really cool and interesting decks. Thank you for this uh, game and looking forward to play with you in the future. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, uh, check out the games that are appearing right now on the screen. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by joining us, subscribing to the channel, and by liking this video, sharing this video with your friends, and leaving a comment, um, feel free, please do. Uh, thank you for now, and see you next time.